so good afternoon students today we are going to discuss performance testing process so what is performance testing is we are going to measure the performance of the system with respect to different parameters based on the scalability based on the reliability based on the speed and then based on the resource usage we are going to test our system so that not only the basic functionality but also the performance means how the functionality is being implemented is also really important as well as with respect to the input and output so performance of any testing of any particular application is very important to ensure that your application is working fine not only with respect to the output but with respect to different parameters like your memory utilization resource usage and then reliability of the system okay so this is the performance testing process you can see here this is the first thing is we have to identify the test environment then we have to determine the performance criteria then you have to plan it and design it and then you have to configure the test environment after that you have to implement the test design after that you have to run the test and then you have to analyze so we will be seeing this one by one so why it is very important that performance testing is that important means as we have seen in mission critical systems if at all the performance is not tested properly what happens the life of a person may go okay so that means whenever a person is there on a ventilator if that ventilator is not working properly for a second or a millisecond also the life of the person is in risk isn't it so the performance testing is very very important in such kind of mission critical systems not only for that whatever may be the application performance testing is very very important so now we'll see how we can uh, each and every step how we can do how we can identify the test environment and what is meant by identifying the test environment so all those things you will see now so what is the first step is we have to identify the test environment in which what we are working okay so identifying the test environment is nothing but we need to know where we are going to test it as we have already discussed so testing we can't do on a live system right we need to test on a physical uh, like test environment we have to do then only we have to make into the production otherwise the actual functionality of the website or the actual functionality what it is there already if you are adding something will be disturbed so first we have to identify where we are going to test it so physical test environment or the production environment or the testing tools available first we have to identify what is where we have to test it physical test environment or on the production environment or on the testing tools okay so that is the first thing and the second thing is where we have to test it on the hardware software what are the details means we have to take it we have to test on everything but what are the details of the hardware software and what is the network configuration this also we should do identify first before doing our performance testing we have to know this first after that we have to identify the performance acceptance criteria what it means what is meant by performance acceptance criteria so what type of performance if your application is going to give okay so that it is acceptable so for example if i take the same example of a life saving equipment medical equipment like your oxygen cylinder or your oxygen mask based on the patient's oxygen level you have to measure the oxygen levels and then you have to supply oxygen to the patient so there the performance acceptance criteria is not even a second of delay is acceptable there that means whenever you are testing if a second of delay is there after testing the oxygen level of the patient you want to supply the oxygen means more whatever you are giving more than that you have to supply so if a second delay is there otherwise the amount of oxygen you are supplying little deviation is there that also you can't accept there but whereas in case if you are uh, taking some online shopping site or if you are taking any website like you are uh, for example if i take any real estate website like shobha developers or prestige builders like that so there you can expect a delay like if any 2 minutes to 5 minutes or 10 minutes delay if it if the site is not working for one hour is also not a big problem that means it should not happen you should test in such a way that the performance of that is maintained but what i am uh, trying to tell is there no life is going to go if it is laid by 5 or 10 minutes definitely the reputation will be there so 5 10 minutes acceptable criteria will be there there again one hour we should not accept so if at all if in any case any 2 to 5 minutes delay is there you can accept because 
it is not that critical for that two minutes. But whereas in life saving equipment or space launches, a deviation, one second deviation of the path also, maybe your spacecraft or your satellite will be lost. So what is the performance acceptance, acceptance criteria you want to keep that also we need to identify. Okay, so that includes goals and constraints. What is that? What is the throughput? And then what is the response time? Whether you are getting the response time in the specified time, what you are expecting or not. And then the resource allocation, how the resources allocation are done. Okay, means all these things, whether it is under the acceptable criteria or not, we are going to check. Okay, so this is the second step we are going to do in our performance acceptance criteria. After that, we are, we are going to plan and design the performance test. Okay, so we have seen already in any, any test case design, planning is very, very important. So that what are all need to be included, what type of test cases, it is very important, right? So here in performance testing also, we are going to plan and design the performance test. Okay, so for planning, what we are going to do is we are going to simulate a variety of uses. What is meant by simulation? means we are going to create an environment, we are going to create a fake environment like the real environment. What is the need of doing that? Because, for example, in real environment, we are expecting 1 million user clicks per second on a website. For example, if you take our Amazon website, now sale is going on, right? So whenever any sale happens or whenever any festival season happens, many customers want to shop, right? So definitely, it is going to increase pressure on the system. Okay, so then we are going to see different different users when they are going to come at the same time, then what happens? So we need to check, right? Okay, we need to check all those things. For that, we, are, we need to simulate a variety of end users. Okay, it is necessary to simulate a variety of end users and then we have to plan the performance test data. What type of data we are going to test? Okay. In case of Amazon, if you take, what, what is the thing we are going to test? That data we need to plan first, and then what are the metrics you can consider? That means what is the reliability of the system, those many users are coming, what is the response time should be there, and how much delay can be acceptable. So all these things we need to plan, and then you can design the test cases. So before knowing this, we can't do, because we have many testing we'll be discussing further in this class. So in that, all different types of performance testing will be having little a small variation between one to another but at the same time everything is equally important so the performance testing process will be same for each and every technique different types of performance techniques are there in the performance testing process will be the same but what is the type of data that means here we are taking to plan performance test data what is the type of data we are going to test and what are the metrics we are expecting will be different for each and every technique okay so this is the third step, plan and design performance test. We are going to plan and design the performance test. So after that, we are going to configure. Finally, so we have done, now we have collected everything, we have planned everything. So finally, we are going to configure the test environment. So how we are going to configure means, we are going to prepare the test environment by using different tools and resources. So what are the necessary tools required? What are the maybe hardware resources or the software resources? Those all, if any software required, we are going to install any hardware, everything we are doing and make it ready. Okay, because some of the places we need additional hardware requirement at that time. So everything is being configured. We are configuring the test environment. So this is the next step. So, okay, environment configuration is also done. Next, we are going to implement the test design. Okay. So whatever we have planned, whatever test cases we have designed, whatever we have configured on that environment, we are going to implement our test design. And then after designing that, we are going to run the test. That means it is very simple. We are going to execute and we are going to monitor the set test. Whatever metrics we are actually, we want to be there, whether they are all satisfied or not, we have, we are actually doing that. That means we are going to monitor that, execute and monitor the test. And then the last step is analyze, tune and reset. So you are analyzing means after executing, so we are analyzing what is the actual results we got after consolidating, we are going to analyze and then we are going to share the results with our team members and then all together we are going to decide if any retuning, that means any small modifications, if it is going to increase the performance, if it is going to increase the response time, if it is going to increase the reliability of the system or not, we are going to check. And then again, we need, we have to see that if any 
improvement is there by doing that or if any reducing more performance is decreased then we need to keep up the previous model only if any changes are made then you, you are able to show more performance you can change that like that we'll be analyzing tuning and we'll be resetting retesting if anything is changed we are again going to retest it so this is how we are going to do our performance testing process first we will be identifying then we will identify the performance acceptance criteria then we will plan and design it then configure the environment then implement the test design then we are going to run the test and then we are going to analyze tune and then retest okay students did you understand how we are going to do our test process yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so then we are going to our types of performance testing so we have different types of performance testing if you see here so these are different types of performance testing so now we'll see what all one by one means what is a different type of performance testing we'll see so first we'll start with our load testing so each and every testing has a different functionality to do okay so each and every testing is important and then it is going to ensure that your system is going to be reliable your system is going to be stable by doing all these kinds of performance testing okay we'll see one by one the first type of testing is load testing okay so load testing is the very simplest form of testing that we are conducting or that we'll be conducting to understand the behavior of the system when 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 we have to understand the behavior of the system is when it is under a specific load so load means whatever in case of websites if you are taking users will be the load that means they are going to visit the website so whenever you take a particular load when you are taking a specific load then what happens to the behavior of that particular application how is it how it is behaving for example i am taking a online boutique okay i am i am taking a online boutique so the number of customers that are expected for the online boutique will be around assume like 3000 users at a time i am telling not the total so at a time maybe maximum 3000 users we can expect so again that depends upon our business so you will be identifying right if it is initially if it is it, it will be less if it is little grown up like that you will be identifying so if i identify our customer or our online body has the capacity of 3000 users for example so in load testing what i am going to do is i am going to check the behavior of the system under specific load under a particular specific load how our system is going to work that is what i am going to test there so i'll be giving 10000 users per users per minute or per second at a time and then i'll check for 2000 and check for 3000 and then i'll be varying different users not only the from the same so maybe the user will be different the user location will be different and then how the user response will be everything will be different and then i am going to test it then what happens to our website whether it is going to withstand the load whether it is not going to withstand the load or what message it is going to show everything we are going to test and also we will be giving the maximum not more than the maximum we will we'll be giving the maximum value say around 3000 then what happens from different kinds of users and different configurations we are giving then what happens so all these things we are going to test in our load testing okay so did anyone find so we have already discussed what is the importance of performance testing and what is the uh, use of formal performance testing what is the process involved in that and that in that we are discussing load testing and then i told what is load testing so it is nothing but we are going to see how under a specific load your system is working now can anyone tell what is the need for load testing is it really required to do the need load testing can anyone tell what is the need for load testing did you find any importance or any is it really required to do load testing yes it is no. required yeah saujanya you can you can tell why you felt that like it is very required to do load testing Uh, yes ma'am actually because uh, if we give lot of inputs then uh, we don't know how much the physical capability of the system is mm -hmm. so if we do the load testing we can uh, put constraints based on how much uh, load the specific system can take yeah okay yeah good so that means 
we are we can't keep the constraint initially but whatever instant constraints we have already that whether it is satisfied or not we are going to check okay so as i told in my case i have a website where i am expecting okay maximum 3000 users but they will be seeing what happens if a different user different kinds of users comes what happened maximum load is given to the system how your system is going to work we are going to see in load testing so the main need is if you are not going to do the load testing the system is going to behave in a unabrupt manner that means we i'll take one example one toy shop toyrus.com is there so it has announced a sale that means it is not having that much like capacity or that much users like for example if you take a famous site like amazon they are having 1 million users for example if you consider that those many users are not there for that particular business okay toysrus.com is one site they have announced a sale what happen whenever any sale comes definitely they will be investing something for advertising they have invested some money on advertising so the sale is have going to happen in this site from this uh, this much time to this much time or these many days everything is over but finally whenever that day came and then all the users came to the site at a time that toyrus uh, uh, that site has gone down that means that site is not responsive because of the overload okay because if at all the test load testing has been done before to the website properly that would add have not been the case so that is one of the example so like that many examples are there we have another example of airline ticket booking also whenever uh, sometimes you will get offers right whenever you are, you are uh, having some festive offers or sometimes whenever you are having holidays they are going to reduce the prices that time the hype of the users who is using the website will be very high that time one of the airlines uh, site was also gone down so like that so to avoid all this condition so going down the site going down okay uh, for one or two hours or one day uh, we can't think that as a simple thing right the reputation of the business is also going down because of that so load testing is very very important then many initially whenever testing has evolved performance testing is not given that priority the main priority is whatever errors we are getting whenever uh the expected output whether we are getting or not that only we are going to consider mostly but once these kind of situations occur then everyone came to understand performance testing is really really important so the site is having everything has used a very good technology to retrieve the data from the database and then the presentation was the good and then user interface was good everything is fine but it is not able to withstand the load so then it is of no use right then finally your customer is not satisfied with the product so for that reason load testing is really important and then what is the main goal of load testing the main goal of load testing is we are going to test what is the response time and then what happens with the related to the database that means not only with respect to the front end we are going even to check with the back end how it is going to retrieve so all these things we are going to see in our load testing so that we'll see what are all the goals so these are the just failures i told you to improper lack of proper load testing so i as i mentioned toystress.com site and then airline website and even the sense of pedia also britannica they have declared free access to their online database as promotional offer but finally when it has come means when we want to uh, access that site the site is not available because it is not going to stand or it didn't withstand the load that has come at a time okay so to ensure that this should not happen to the application or to the software what we have developed we have to ensure that load testing is done properly and all the parameters are checked properly so now we'll see what is the goals of load testing so what is the goal of load testing is response time for each transaction not only one transaction each and every transaction is also important whenever any for example you are going to a amazon site and you have done shopping okay after you have added all the items what you want to buy and then you are you have proceeded to the checkout and then you have given your bank details and then some interruption maybe network interruption or maybe some problem happens then what happens to your data that also that means for each and every transaction every transaction should be taken care and then what happens to the response time if you are doing that how much time it is taking how much response time it is going to give whether it is going to retrieve the data immediately whether it is going to uh, book or your order immediately or not everything we need to consider in your 
load testing okay response time for each transaction and then performance of system components okay how the components are performing under various loads okay whether okay you are giving load but the system is not going to crash or it is responding slowly is there but the actual output what you are expecting is not coming because of the load the performance of the system components has been changed that also you need to test it. and then how is the performance of the database components whether it is going to retrieve the database uh, from the database the images or the video files or the music files whatever you want properly or not that also really really important because whenever you see only whenever in your shopping sites when you scroll fast when you are going to buffer the images fast again it depends on the bandwidth of your connection also it will take little time okay so like that whenever many users at a time when sale happens many users are going to access the database then what happens what is the performance of the database components also we are going to test then what is the network delay okay so whenever you client and server is there whenever you are going to access something from the server any network delays happens that also we need to test in our load testing and any design issues are there with respect to the software and how the server configuration okay if any issues are there the application server with respect to the web server in with respect to the database server when we are giving a request whether it is going to the application server whether it is going to the database server and how it is going to retrieve how much response time it is going to take and what is the amount of resources it is going to use whether it is going to give the response time means these are all we are going to see with respect to the load when a specific load is given all these conditions are working fine or not we are going to test it okay then hardware limitation any limitations are there for hardware and issues are there so all these things we are going to test with respect to your load testing these are all the goals of your load testing then we will see what are the strategies you can follow in our load testing okay so strategies i can tell like means how you can do the load testing so first one is using manual load testing manually you can do the load testing by selecting manually but this is really difficult in case of medium scale or large scale applications generally doing the load testing how the load is and then how it is being used checking manually is little difficult but this is one of the option and then in house developed load testing tools that means according to the application what is specific to your application you are going to develop that is also important okay what is specific to your application why uh, it is not required that you are buying something which is not related to your application functionality then that in house you are going to develop your own load testing tools and you are going to test your performance this is the second option we have second strategy you can follow and then the other strategy is open source load testing tools okay these are all the open source down you can see load testing tools i have given neo load load view load runner and web load these are the different testing tools already open uh, that those are all open source you can use to test our if you are developing your own website also you can test that using these all tools otherwise you can test the existing ones also these are all open source so open source load testing tools for, can be selected so it's all depends upon our budget as well so if you have if you are not having that much budget to buy anything specific to your application or you don't want to build any in house in house development then then you can use open source again if it is matching to your testing needs then only you can do. if at all if you are using any mission critical system like i say spacecraft and if you are telling that i'll be using open source load testing tools that is not at all possible because the requirement will be separate we have to design for your own specific application a separate load testing tools so sometimes it will be matched in other normal e-commerce websites if you want to test maybe you can use open source and sometimes enterprise class loading testing tools also can be there that means the total enterprise they can be developing their own testing to suit as their own products okay instead of taking buying from others they are doing because their functionality will be of same right which is belonging to the same enterprise their functionality will be the same again instead of buying they will be developing their own so these are the strategies you can follow while selecting how to do the load testing okay manually can do otherwise in house you can develop otherwise open source which are available also you can do otherwise enterprise class testing tools also we can do so these are all the different strategies you can follow in our load testing okay so everyone understood so this is how we are going to do our load testing and then the load testing process what we are going to do is the same what we have seen already the performance testing process the steps are same but only here 
what is the data we are taking and what is the metrics we are we are expecting will be different when you are telling that load testing okay the remaining process will be the same whatever we are doing configuring planning testing again rerunning the test will be the common for load testing as well okay so now can anyone tell me what is the advantage of load testing did you find any advantage in doing load testing students can anyone tell did you find any advantage in doing load testing it helps anticipate demand better ma'am can you can you speak little loud i can't hear it helps in anticipating user demand once it is launched okay you are anticipating user how many users are going to come once it is launched okay so what is the use of doing that you are anticipating by anticipating what is the uh, advantage you are getting ma'am because if let's say mission critical systems crash ma'am or website business reputation will go down so nobody wants that so when you can, when you are confident that it can handle one lakh say customers ingress so that time they they'll know that it won't crash their reputation will be held yeah yeah good that is one of the advantage that means the confidence will be having the confidence on the system the performance is the, of the system is well will have that confidence okay so that is the one of the advantage and then what is the disadvantage can anyone uh, find out the disadvantage as well can you tell me what is the disadvantage you found out yeah you can tell me what is the drawback did you find out any drawback time consuming ma'am yeah good so it is little time consuming and other thing is simulation we have discussed right simulation will be doing uh, how the end users we are going to do so that uh, that simulation should be done properly okay if you are not doing the simulation properly again you can't ensure the whatever results you got that is actually the one what we are expecting so if the simulation you are going to do properly only you can tell that whatever testing load test you have done that is successful okay so this is how we have to do our load testing so then we'll see what is stress testing other type of technique is stress te uh, testing okay stress we know the word right that means we are giving more pressure okay that may be anything okay that is called as stress so what is meant by stress testing means we are going to give the upper limit means as i told in one case one of the online boutique if i am taking the maximum capacity of users at a time i am expecting is 3000 but i gave more than the maximum limit that means maximum is 3000 more than that like 5000 6000 7000 i give then what happens so this also applicable to your same what i have explained in your load testing if at all any sale happens that means you don't expect you can't expect maybe initially your business is for 3000 maybe you will expect okay 6000 may come but if it is going to cross that also more than the maximum you got some 7000 8000 then then what happens to the system how your system is going to behave so all these things we need to test again so for that we'll be doing stress testing okay in our load testing we are not giving the more than the maximum we are giving certain in the range only we are going to give certain load but the number of users means the type of users and the configurations we are giving will be different but here what we are giving we are going maximum more than the maximum capacity also maximum capacity 3000 we can go little means 3200 or 500 but i am going more than that 6000 7000 i am going then what happens to the system we are going to see in stress testing so the main parameters here we have to consider is robustness and then error handling capabilities okay so how much it is going to withstand and then if any error comes whether it is going to handle by itself that means when any pressure comes any stress is coming more than the maximum it is going to able to open that if not it is going to take time it is it should give a message to the uh, person or the end user it is taking little while please wait a moment like that otherwise how it is going to do so all these things we want to test on a particular application or a particular software so the main parameters we will be seeing in stress testing is how any error comes how it is going to handle that and then 
how it is ensure the robustness of the software is there so all these things we are going to test in our stress testing okay so again in stress testing we have different types so one of the thing is distributed and other one is application then transactional then systematic and then exploratory so these are different types of uh, stress testing that are available so we'll see one by one so what is meant by distributed uh, stress testing means will be the clients will be distributed okay one server is there and then different clients are distributed so at a time if all the clients more than the required so stress testing is more than the required so at a time many requests means client means not only one request right so many requests multiple requests are coming from different all the all the different clients okay then the server acceptable user requests they are coming so this can be valid in your client server interactions you can't tell this for your application for the client server inter 